Hi guys, it's Iggy again. One last tutorial for today and only because it was requested by somebody who wanted to know a little bit more how to use deformers. So this tutorial is going to go over deformers and how to use them and more specifically how to create a clothing morph to fix poke through. I'm in DS4 so I'm going to demonstrate this in DS4 as it's the latest version of DAS Studio so it's probably the best one to use. Um, you can adapt this to DS3 though as the deformers work exactly the same way. Um, the tabs and stuff and where everything is located will be different naturally as the UI is changed but the principle, the basic principle is the same. So what you're looking at is ICO4 which I've loaded and the bodice for Vermilion Dawn. Um, the reason I've chosen this combination of figures is because Vermilion Dawn doesn't have any icomorphs in it. And uh, so I'm going to demonstrate how to do a fix morph for this bodice for ICO4. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click the seam and this is where the bodice will be. And we're going to expand this and we're going to click on the chest. And actually the chest doesn't look too, too bad. But you can see when I hover over her that the neck is a little big and the sides of the abdomen are a little big for her. So actually let's click the abdomen and we're going to go to our deformer tab. I actually have mine already loaded in my interface in case I need it. But if you don't, you can find it here, window, tabs, and then, oops, you just go to uh, deform right here, and then it'll open it, and you can dock it here too. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So now that our abdomen is selected on our outfit, um, we're going to hit create new, and it's going to prompt you to enter a unique name. You can, I'm not going to. And now you'll see on the left under the abdomen that the deformer has shown up. <clears throat> there are three basic parts to a deformer. There's the base, the deformer itself, and then the deformer field. And we're going to start with the deformer field and explain what it does. If we click parameters and you use your translate tools on the deformer field and you move them up and down, you'll notice that the settings change. Basically the colors of the vertices will change. The red is where it's going to be affected the most, whereas the yellow is the falloff zone or where it'll be affected the least. And you can change the scale of your deformer. Just demonstrate that slowly. And you can see that the red is getting a little bit more prominent as the deformer field gets bigger. But we're going to leave it just like that. <clears throat> now, this is my first time actually doing this in DS4, so you're going to have to uh, give me a second to figure out how to do this. Okay, I got it. Um, if you look, you can see that this is only affecting the abdomen right now. So if you were to morph this, only the abdomen would be affected, which would leave the chest area up here completely unaffected. And what this will do is actually create a ridge, which you don't want. You want a smooth transition. So if you want a smooth transition, what you have to do is you have to add a node. And basically, we're going to add, as we already are on the abdomen, we're going to add the chest. And I have to remember how to do this because it's been a while since I tried this. Add a node. No. It goes chest. Then you're going to select the deformer. 
And now when you click the deformer, the whole entire thing is lit up. <clears throat> but we need to uh, tweak our field a little bit because that's a little bit too big for what we're wanting to affect. So we're going to tone this down to like there. Let me check. Actually, I could probably, oops, wrong scale. We only want this to really primarily affect the abdomen. And my mousey is not working very good. It's only getting bigger. Hello. Okay, now we've got it. <clears throat> I was using a, a tablet to control it, which I guess doesn't work very well. So now that we have a basic area where it's going to be affected the most and where we want to tweak it, we're going to take the deformer itself and then we're going to use the various things to uh, make a shape. And you'll want, you'll want to turn her around and make sure that that shape is actually good. And if you find that it's a little bit too intense, you can just tweak it. And you can actually use the deformer to even move the mesh around. So uh, let's use the translate. You can pull it any which way you want and you can see where the red is it's being affected the most whereas the yellow is a fall off zone. But we don't want to do that. That was just for demonstration purposes. When you have a good result you're going to want to go back over to the deformer. You're going to want to select the areas that it's deforming. So in this case, it's both the abdomen and the chest. And you're going to go to spawn morph. Let's call this abdomen fix morph. And it would help to type it right. And you hit OK. Then you want to go to the chest and do the same thing. Add our chest morph. And hit OK. And then when you go to the parameters and you go to, oops, that's the deform. Where did it spit my morph? Okay. <clears throat> now we can actually delete the deformer and we can use our abdomen fit morph in its place. Now you'll notice right here, see how it's crooked? That's because we only have our abdomen dialed in. We also have to dial in the same one on the chest. And there you go. Perfect fit. Now, you'll also notice that doing clothing with deformers can get difficult, as I mentioned earlier, because of the way that DS works, basically you can't build off of morphs that you already have. So when you're doing multiple areas on a piece of clothing that have to be tweaked, like say the abdomen and the neck, and I wanted it to be one solid fit morph that does it across the board, I would actually have to load a deformer here just like I did and a deformer here on the neck and spawn those deformers all at once. That way, the one morph will control all of them. Now, say you want to... Property editor. Uh-oh, I shouldn't have done that. This takes forever. But to explain, say you want to um, make an FBM. What an FBM is, is a full body morph. Basically, FBMs control multiple morphs over multiple areas. So rather than having to dial in the abdomen and the chest and the neck at the same time, you would only have to dial one in by the control node or on the body part, um, the main body part of the figure. 
so it would control all of those simultaneously instead of one at a time. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to dial all those morphs in as I have already done with the chest and the abdomen. And using the property editor, you're going to um, actually tell DS that you want to make those morphs into an ERC, which is an extended remote control. This will make a full body morph so that you can control all of those morphs using one dial and one dial only. If my hierarchy ever finishes refreshing, I will show you exactly how to do this. For now, I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to sit here and wait. Okay, we are back after that very long wait. <laughs> um, as you can see, I left off where I was going to explain how to use the um, ERC freeze in the property editor to make a full body morph. So going back to that, as you can see, uh, I have my property editor open. And this right here, this lovely thing, is ERC freeze. Now you're going to pick bodice. And you notice that it automatically detects the morphs that are auto already dialed in. So you're going to leave these all checked. The node is going to be the bodice because that is the main node or the body, how it would be in Poser. Um, the property you want is create new. And no, that's not what I want. You know, was create new. Sorry, I haven't done this in a while, so you're going to have to just kind of work with me here. Okay, <clears throat> so the path we want is probably going to be Morse. And we're going to name this Echo 4. Now, if you were actually doing this for a pack and you wanted it to crosstalk, it would have to be named FBM. I go for, and I think body, I'm not sure on that. You would have to check the deltas in the ICO pack to be certain. It might just be FBM ICO 4. And uh, we don't want that hidden, and we don't want that locked, and we want, yes, can animate. So we're just going to leave all these default, and we're going to click Create, Accept. And now we're going to go over here, and we're going to zero our shape or not. We're going to go over here and we're going to go, we're going to zero our shape and it's not working. <laughs> the story of my life. Um, we're going to go and zero these out manually. Um, and then we're going to click on the body. FBM, I go, I go for, and I don't know why it's locked at that point. Oh, wait, it's not supposed to be locked. Ugh. This is not working out for me at all. <laughs> but that's how you do it. That's how you make an FBM. Um, it could be that I just have this set up wrong. And I'm new to DS4, so let me see if it's over here somewhere. It should be in this mess. Of course, I'm working off of a pack that's already been released and has 150 different morphs to it. So, parameter settings. Well, let's take this to 200% and see if that helps. And yes, it does. 
don't ask me. I don't get it. I've never done an FBM in, in DS4 before, so you're not the only one that's learning stuff today. <laughs> but um, you get the general idea. I think that I probably had uh, limits set unknowingly or some kind of weird setting. But that's basically how you would make an FBM. So that concludes this tutorial. Um, you know, just uh, play with it a little bit and get your bearings um, before you run. You, you have to walk. So I suggest starting small with little things and then working your way toward doing more difficult more sets like fit morphs would be for clothing. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope it helped you out. Thanks for watching. Bye.